we're going to take a look at the sequencer tool. It allows us to basically change any properties over time. Properties are things like, for example, on our post-process volume, we have the different colors, saturation effects, and how strong it is. Or maybe in the case of our barrel, whether or not it exists, the color of the light, and if our special effects is on. It also includes things such as our location, rotation, and scaling. What we're going to do is take our post-process volume and slowly desaturate our scene. So rather than going on or off, we're going to do it over two seconds. Inside of our content folder, I'm going to make a new folder called Sequences. Inside of our Sequences folder, I can right-click in the content browser, go to Cinematics, Level Sequence. And I'm going to call this Sequence Saturate. We can double-click to open up the Sequence Editor. It may dock down at the bottom. If not, you can dock it wherever you'd like. If you've used a nonlinear editing software before, this may look familiar. We have some tracks on the left, which are the items we're going to be working with, and on the right is our timeline. And along the top on our toolbar are all of our settings. We need to add the post-process volume because that's what we're going to be working with. We can select the post-process volume in the world, add the track, select Accurate Sequencer, and add a post-process volume. That's the one that we have selected. Or we can find it in our list, or we can drag and drop it right in. You'll also notice there is additional items we can add to our track, such as the ability to create a cinematic using a custom camera. Maybe we're going to sweep through the level or something else like that. Inside of our post-process volume, we want to adjust the value of our saturation in our color grading. If we scroll down, we can find color grading. We have a global section and we have a saturation section. Right now, it's currently disabled. I also want you to make sure that you remove your material post-process that we added to this, if you're going to do this, because they will conflict. We're going to adjust the saturation built in to the post-process volume. Now, at this point, we can use the keyframe button on the right to add these properties. So our saturation, for example, could be added directly, or we can click on the Add Track button to the right of the item, find what we want. For example, this is the Transform, not really useful for post-process, but maybe if you wanted to move the barrel. But we have settings, color grading global, saturation. Now right now it's set to one, so everything is set up to be colorful. We need to add keyframes where we want to start our value and where we want to change our value. You can think of keyframes as points of time holding certain values, and over that time, we will adjust it. We have auto keyframe turning on. That means whenever something is changed, it'll go ahead and pick up the change. But we need at least one keyframe to start with. At zero seconds on our timeline, we'll go and add a keyframe. It's at the value of one. And what we want to do now is drag out our bar to 60 or 60 frame. When we're running 30 frames per second, our 60th frame is going to be two seconds long. And then now that we have it keyframed, we can adjust this value. I'm going to adjust it down to zero. So now at two seconds, it's going to be zero. And you'll notice our values on the left will adjust. So it's going to go from full color to desaturated over two seconds. But you'll notice we can't see it in the preview. And that's because we don't have infinite turned on. We'll turn back on infinite. And now as we scrub through our timeline, you'll see it working. One thing to keep in mind when we're in the sequencer, it's going to have those sequencer effects applied to our viewport. If we were to close our sequencer so it's no longer open, those effects will no longer be applying to our scene. Opening back up our sequencer, we can drag our red bar over to 60, so that way our sequence will be exactly 60 frames. We'll save this and we'll close it out. Now we need to actually play this inside of our project. We can drag it, and no, we can't we can't actually apply a sequencer directly inside of UEFN. We need a cinematic sequencer device. If we go into the Fortnite folder, under Devices, we can look for Cinematic, and we can find the cinematic sequencer device. I'll drag this, drop this into my world. It's going to ask me which sequence to play. We only have one, our Saturate. I don't want it to auto-play, and I don't want any of our settings changed. We want this to play when I trigger it. We're going to walk up to our barrels. The player will walk over trigger, and then we'll go ahead and play this. So we're going to need a trigger. Let's look for trigger. We have our trigger device. I'll drag this in, put it in front of our third barrel. 
our trigger device has a trigger event that we need to hook up to our cinematic device. Under user options functions, we want our cinematic device to play when the trigger calls on trigger. We'll select the trigger, or we can use the eyedropper to choose it in the world. And then the function we want to call is on triggered. It's going to go ahead and play now when the trigger is triggered. Now, before we go ahead and hit play to test this out inside of Fortnite, here's something you may run into. Inside of Fortnite, if we were to attempt to start the game, our start game button is missing. And if we go into my island, you notice it tells us there's no settings available. We don't have a settings device. Since we started this project map from an empty template, we didn't have an island device set up for us automatically. So inside of your devices folder is an island settings device. You can drag that, drop that into your world. And when you go back into Fortnite, you'll find you now have the ability to start the game and your settings are back. Once our session has been updated and our changes have been put into place, let's go ahead and start the game and test and make sure our cinematic device is working and we get the nice desaturation effect over two seconds. And you can see the cinematic played and we have our nice effect. Level sequences can be used for more than just keyframing actions and events and properties inside of our world. We can actually use it to create or modify the skeletal animations inside of UEFN and introduce our own animations into our projects.